Uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to the Foreign Correspondence Club. Uh, my name is uh, James Sims. I'm the president of the club. Uh, we just recently had an election. And as you know, this year is the FCCJ's uh, 70th anniversary. And uh, as a part of our speaker program, we are trying to get uh, representatives of Japanese government, society, and obviously business uh, to come uh, talk about the current state and the future of Japan. Um, and so today, um, we have uh, the... Uh, Representative, the Chief Representative, the Chairman of the Japan Association of uh, Corporate Executives, uh, Mr. Yoshimitsu uh, Kobayashi. And today uh, he will be uh, doing a brief overview of the Japanese economy, its outlook, and what Japan needs to do to move the com country forward, um, including uh, issues such as sustainability, uh, energy policy, uh, free trade, uh, labor regulations, uh, as well as uh, environmental issues as we come into uh, the talks that will be coming up in Paris at the end of the year on uh, climate change. And we were talking in the ante room earlier. Um, he, his background is in, um, I think it's radiation physics. And so he's, we were talking about uh, the various research projects that the, his company, um, Mitsubishi Chemical Holdings, is doing in terms of uh, trying to reduce uh, the impact on the environment from uh, economic activities. But so anyway, without any uh, further ado, um, I would like to uh, welcome our uh, guest today, uh, Mr. Yoshimitsu Kobayashi, the chairman of the uh, Japan, Japan Association of uh, Corporate uh, Executives. And before I forget, uh, and today um, is our interpreter, uh, Ms. Takamatsu. Anyway, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the very kind introduction by uh, uh, Simsan. Uh, also, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to talk to you. Uh, in Foreign Correspondent Club of Japan. As of April 29th, uh, I was assigned as the chairman of uh, Kedai Doyukai, and just uh, two months has passed. I would like to today to talk about what I'm going to uh, do together with my members of uh, Kedai Doyukai about our business management and also the proposal for the uh, government policy. Uh, this is uh, what I'm going to talk about today. And uh, uh, here you can read that uh, what I'm talking about is the, uh, the items about the mainly sustainability of the society and also how to handle the uh, corporate management, and also uh, after, uh, before the question and answer, I would like to talk a little bit about the uh, uh, following items. One is the uh, latest Japanese economy, our opinion on uh, fiscal consolidation plan of the government, uh, which comes uh, uh, shorter. Yeah tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, and also free trade agreement, labor policy, energy policy of Japan, and environment uh, measures. Let me first give you uh, some explanation about the terminology, Japan version 2.0. Actually, Japan version 2.0 is not a buzzword created by the Japanese media. I myself uh, created this term about two months ago. Uh, from 1945 to 19, uh, 2015, after the Second World War II, Japan enjoyed a huge economic growth. Although some people say that latest uh, last two decades has lost 20 years. And let us call these 70 years as Japan 1.0 or version 1.0, whatever. Uh, I propose that we are now moving toward a new era from 2020, which I call Japan version 2.0. The year of 2020 marks an extremely critical juncture for Japan. We must ensure the success of the Olympic and Paralympic Games. Moreover, 
Japan has pledged to the international community that it will achieve a primary surplus by fiscal 2020. At the same time, Japan faces a number of problems that require long-term solutions. We must tackle those issues so that we can make sure to move toward sustainable society. Also, as mentioned in the second machine age, or Industry 4.0, we are now coming to the age of cyber physical space, which is composed of both real economy and cyber economy. Uh, big data, AI, 3D printing, etc. In this respect, the coming five years from 2015 to 2020 will be a critical time for us to succeed the transition from Japan version 1.0 to 2.0. Now, I would like to share the urgency of this truth. No bright future without revolutionary transformation. Needless to say, we are facing a very broad range of issues. We cannot avoid looking away from inconvenient truths and problems. Particularly, I would like to share out our understanding on the following three points. Firstly, let us remember that Japan has accumulated more than 1,000 trillion yen in public debt and now faces the potential risk of fiscal collapse. Japan has made an international pledge to achieve a primary surplus by fiscal 2020. But this is merely a milestone on the way to fiscal reconstruction. The path to debt reduction must be firmly established. Number two, Japan is experiencing declining birth rate and uh, aging of society. Two problems that are com common to mature societies throughout the world. The total fertility rate in many developed countries have dipped far below two children per women. My third point is the global agenda. It covers economic disparity and poverty, ethnic and religious conflict, shortages of food and water, the exhaustion of energy and other resources, and also climate change on a global scale. Also, I believe it is important to envision future societies from the perspectives of these global ties of change. These are globalization, IT revolution, and socializations. As I mentioned in the beginning, 2020 marks an extremely critical juncture for Japan. We must ensure the success of the Olympic and the Paralympic Games. Moreover, Japan has praised to the international community that it will achieve a primary surplus by fiscal 2020. At the same time, Japan requires solutions for pollution, uh, population decline, regional revitalization, uh, sustainability of social security systems, energy and the environment. We cannot allow ourselves to fall behind the global tide or th these cutting edge uh, development. By 2020, we must achieve visible and tangible result to enter the era of Japan version 2.0. It is particularly important to realize that Japan today is standing on the edge of a cliff, not a mere turning point. In developed economies as Japan, US, Europe, etc., GDP growth rate has gradually declined as society matured. Combined with the effects of the uh, rapid growth of emerging countries, the shape of these developed economies in global GDP is receding. GDP is calculated based on factors that can be measured in monetary and the economic terms. Thus it provides an appropriate metric of the satisfaction and happiness that people derive from meeting their material needs. But I feel there are limits 
to the usefulness and the effectiveness of GDP as a metric concerning people's well-being. We, Kedai Do Yukai, are going to discuss on the future society, including these kinds of concepts. Also, the most focal points to discuss are, of course, productivity and the effectiveness of the economy or uh, business itself. Next one is the drawing of, uh, uh, of the uh, cyberspace age. A little bit, uh, it's a very fundamental mathematics I used uh, uh, in the high school we learned. Uh, let me consider Japan version 2.0 uh, from another viewpoint or another angle. I think we are now witnessing the dawning of the uh, cyberspace age. In the age of real things, value was measured in progressively smaller unit of weight and traced the shift to lighter and more compact products, from tons to kilogram to grams to milligram and finally to micrograms, like medicine or a pharmaceutical product. We can readily see that in the uh, cyberspace age, information with no weight will be the source of value. Uh, that is to say, uh, atom to bit, or bit to atom. These kind of combination will be very critical. Uh, three months ago, um, one idea come to me. I refer to this as a Z equal A plus BI, where A stand for atom and B for bit and I stand for internet, I stand for internet, or imaginary parts, and at the same time, uh, it means the imaginary parts, or number. I believe this very elegantly described the world beyond 2020. Uh, call to mind conjugate complex number that you studied in school, as already said, that multiplying two conjugate complex numbers a plus bi and a minus bi yields z times that z equal a plus bi times a minus bi. This in turn is equal to a square minus b square times i a square equals a squared plus b squared. A object can be measured in terms of size and weight. But what this means is that uh, virtual space with no weight and services can also be counted in terms of uh, size. This is also a little bit complicated three-dimensional drawing. Uh, now uh, let me explain my philosophy on the corporate management of uh, three or four-dimensional accesses. Since 2010, I started to install this concept to Mitsubishi Chemical Holding, and now I could say around 70% become successful, settled inside the employee's mind. Firstly, I will explain very briefly what is the kaiteki value, or from where the corporate value can be defined. As here depicted, management of economics management of technology, and management of sustainability. These are very independently controlled and monitored. As you look at the x-axis, this, is, this uh, just represents the performance of uh, uh, economy or management, uh, especially return on equity. That kind of capital efficiency is always uh, very important parameters, but it's always uh, measured monthly or quarterly. And the y-axis, it represents the uh, management of technology or innovation uh, induction. Uh, that takes uh, more than decades. And the z-axis, this represents uh, a management of sustainability, which include a uh, reduction of carbon dioxide or 
CSR type of uh, performances of the, of the company. So if we uh, draw the uh, vector, which come from uh, three-dimensional uh, parameters, this blue vector, this one means just a uh, corporate value. Not usually in the market, only ROE or this uh, capital efficiency is always a, uh, cited as uh, only one parameter to pursue the uh, performance of each company, but I, I definitely think that uh, for the sustainability of the company, uh, we have to discuss these three-dimensional uh, value of the corporate, including performance of ec economical uh, systems and also production of the new product to the society, and also we have to take uh, care of the uh, society itself. And also we have to think about the, uh, the concept uh, of time, uh, because uh, we are now living in the 21st, beginning of the 21st century. What the society requires to the corporate, that kind of thing is also very important. Uh, and also it's very interesting to know that uh, this way of corporate management of just uh, corresponding to International Integrated Recording Council principle or ISO 26000 and also ESG methodology. Uh, as for one of the corporate governance, Keidai Doyuka already raised a proposal for ROE, return on equity. Uh, also to our recommendation, uh, sorry, uh, according to our recommendation, companies should achieve double digit return on equity, ROE. Also, uh, last year, uh, to tell the truth, that the performance of Mitsubishi Chemical is around uh, 6.4 ROE. Uh, there are no question ROE stand uh, as one of the critically important indicator in corporate management. At the same time, it is necessary to, to take into account such factors as the industry specific characteristics of each industry, management policies and capability to communicate with stakeholders. For, for, for instance, Amazon company is operating in the uh, red, and the, its ROE is negative. However, the company is highly valued in the stock market. I presume that many people who are working in bookstores has lost their jobs due to Amazon, but Amazon has emerged as a company capable of meeting the needs of growing number of consumers and products and provide a distribution infrastructure that is now indispensable to society. Innovative product introduced by Apple, such as iPhone and iPad, has brought about social transformation on a scale that would have been impossible to predict 10 years ago. Another issue I wish to present is that we need to break mindset of corporate executives. It is quite possible that the process of breaking through rigid regulations or uh, accelerating the pace of innovation will work to the disadvantages of our own companies or even to the elimination of certain businesses. In such instances, the possibility of corporate executives and sales becoming part of the forces of resistance cannot be denied. However, top management must be prepared to make bold decisions and to act swiftly on cutting edge development and the ties of global change. Facing an uncertain future, corporate executives frequently find themselves in turmoil and struggling with conflicting forces. But the point is that uh, we must not allow ourselves to become captives of the 
constructive rigidity that exists in our own mindset. Now, uh, let me talk a little bit about the uh, major topics for Japan economy. Some, uh, okay, since the uh, Abenomics started in the end of 2012, major improvement have be been made and we are overcoming some of what we call the six tribulations or the seven tribulations. That means uh, we have uh, six or seven handicaps when compared to the other countries. But by the, by the means of, or by the help of uh, monetary easing, this is a first row, and uh, also second row fiscal stimulation. Uh, especially this depreciation of Japanese yen contributed a lot to companies' performance as we generate profit from overseas. A view of government and other statistics indicates that the Japanese economy remains on track for a moderate recovery. What is the outlook for the Japanese economy? I expect the horizon to remain bright. We conduct quarterly surveys in Doyukai. In the latest survey this month, out of 589 members from Kedai Doyukai, 43.8% said the real GDP growth for 2015 would be between 1.5% and less than 2.0%. And then 24.6% forecasted somewhere between 1.0% and uh, less than 1.5%. We also asked to identify area of concern for Japanese economy. 53.3% deprived with the future of the world economy centered on Europe and the United States. In second place, 52.1% was a declining consumption due to lack of progress in addressing the problem of declining population. As you are aware of today, Greek EU issue will be the very strong concern for the world economy. Then come to the uh, fiscal construction, uh, consolidation. Uh, on the subject of fiscal consolidation, uh, uh, cons consolidation, as I mentioned, Japan has made an international pledge to achieve a primary surplus by fiscal 2020. To maintain the confidence of the markets, it is absolutely essential to meet this goal. On top of that, I believe it is justified to set indicators of progress in reducing the G government debt to GDP ratio and set to asset to GDP ratio. Uh, fiscal year 2018 marks the midway point in the goal for achieving a primary surplus. Shortly, the government will announce the plan specific goal negotiated with LDP, whether or not to restrain increase of social security expenditures down to 1.5 trillion yen for three years. The Japanese government plan looks uh, very optimistic for the future revenues from economic growth, assuming that the uh, 3% nominal and 2% uh, real GDP increase. Also, by 2025, all baby boomers will be above the age of 75. This will further increase spending on health and long-term care afterwards. I consider these to be major risk factors. Uh, in the area of trade policy above, Above all, I am so much pleased to witness uh, remarkable progress in the United States Congress, which had uh, great momentum to the TPP negotiations, now facing the final stage. I also hope that the United States and Japan work closely to clear all the remaining bilateral issues 
and the ministerial meeting of the 12 participating countries to be held in a timely manner. And the Keidai Doyukai will appreciate successful negotiations. Also regarding the Japan EU EPA, export and import between the two sides are roughly equal at around 7 trillion yen. On the other hand, tariff payment on Japanese export to the EU comes to about 240 billion yen, which is nearly twice the amount of tariff payment on EU export to Japan. Therefore, I, readily, uh, I really expect the negotiation to progress toward a greater trade liberation. And a little bit about employment policy, uh, I'll talk a little bit. Uh, regarding labor policy, the House of Representatives passed the revised Worker Dispatching Act on the 19th this month. We appreciate this as a significant step forward. The proposed division of the Labor Standard Act featuring the introduction of a category of highly specialized professional workers is before the diet. Now that the diet session has been significantly extended to September 27th, I do hope that the bill will pass during the current session. And also an enactment of these divisions will provide both workers and management with more choices, which is a very good thing. However, management must be pay attention to avoiding a situation where those who are cautious about the bills fear. Another question is a monetary dissolution system for wrongful or unfair dismissal. A panel of experts is established before the end of this year. I'm watching this progress in a very positive way. Uh, finally, come to the energy policy and the environment. Uh, on the subject of this energy policy, let me start with number uh, nuclear power. In July 2011, soon after the Great East Japan earthquake, Keidai Doyuka issued a policy proposal that called for reducing dependence on nuclear power. This was followed in March this year by in-depth recommendations featuring three specific proposals. One is the first uh, restart and operate reactors once safety is confirmed. Second, reduce dependence on nuclear power to a certain level over the medium to long term by decommissioning absolute reactors and substituting nuclear power with renewable energy and energy conservation. Thirdly, it is like unlikely that renewable energy can meet more than 30% of energy needs by 2030, even if the p pace of introduction is maximized. Therefore, to achieve about 50% in zero emission power generation, nuclear power will have to continue supplying at least 20% of Japan's power needs. These outline the basic thinking of Kedai Do Yukai on this subject. This is a, a drawing of, of what we are now thinking. Compared to 2010, before the earthquake, uh, we proposed to uh, reduce dependence on nuclear power to a certain level and dramatically increase renewable energy while reducing the percentage of coal or uh, gas fired. Our proposal is pretty much close to, to the government proposal. Uh, we, uh, our proposal was uh, just announced in the end of uh, March and the government after just uh, one month uh, later, nearly very similar uh, proposal has come from the government. Uh, finally, uh, environment policy. Uh, the G7 summit adopted a leader's declaration that introduced a new long-term goal for reducing global greenhouse gas emission 
by the upper end of 40 to 70 percent by 2050 compared to 2010 levels. The Japan government proposed reduce greenhouse gas emission for 26 percent by 2030 based on amounts of 2013. This is a very aggressive target, I think. We request the government to establish an effective international framework with all major emitting countries at COP21 in Paris in December in order to keep the rise in the average global temperature within two degrees centigrade, centigrade over the super long run, business have to pay a central role in implement innovation. We are asking the government to support R&D for innovation and to promote existing effective technologies, including highly efficient solar generation, storage batteries, LED lighting, insulator materials, and uh, very lightweight materials. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Okay, uh, thank you very much. And I forgot just one housekeeping note. If you have your cell phone, if you could just please put it on uh, manner mode or turn it off. And anyway, so we'd like to go to questions from the uh, working press. Um, if you have uh, any questions, uh, please state your name and your affiliation, and uh, no uh, speeches. Martin Kölling with the German Financial Daily Handelsblatt. Uh, basically, two questions I would like to ask. One is about the situation in Europe. Everybody is now scratching their heads, uh, what this might uh, mean for the future. I would like to understand the position of the Japanese companies, of, of yourself, uh, what your concerns are regarding the situation in uh, Greece, possible Brexit, and what you fear could be the worst outcome for Japanese companies. This would be my first question. The second question is, you mentioned it a little bit in your speech, um, the new growth and fiscal consolidation plan of Prime Minister Abe. Um, I would like to understand your position on uh, your evaluation of the um, progress of Prime Minister Abe on two fronts. One is um, fiscal reconsolidation. Uh, because in that regard, Prime Minister Abe seems to hesitate um, to step on, uh, to start saving. Uh, and you mentioned that, uh, I would like to understand whether you think that this really will lead to a fiscal consolidation this, uh, and can re basically reach the goal of um, turning into a, the deficit into a positive balance by 2020. The second point is um, then, of course, uh, the um, structural reforms, the so-called structural reforms. Uh, what, are the, what reforms do you think have been implemented already? How, suc how successful uh, have they been implemented? And what is still lacking in your point of view? あのドイツの金融のシンボルでございます。たくさんの質問が、えー、出たわけでございます。えー、一つはあのギリシャの問題でございますが、あの日本のえー、の。えー企業またその経済同友会のメンバー企業たちはこれをどう見てらっしゃるんでしょうかどのような直接な影響があの日本の企業を受けるとふうに思ってらっしゃるんでしょうかそして最悪のシナリオを考えますとどういうものを考えられますでしょうかで2つ目の質問でございますこれはあの二部構成になるんでございますが先ほどそのアベノミクス、まあ、あの安倍首相の,その成長戦略またその財政健全化政策などについてあの、えー、触れたわけなんでございますがこの進捗状況をどう評価されてまあ、具体的に伺いますと、その経済、財政再建ということでございますが、あんまりその実際の,その歳出カットにおいて、安倍政権は積極的ではないというような感じがするんでございますが、本当にその黒字化、2020年までは基礎的財政収支の黒字化というのは達成できると思いますでしょうか、もしその進み具合が良いと思いますと、どのような部分で良い政策を進めているんでしょうか。そしてもう一つでございますがその
る構造改革についてでございます。これも同じように、具体的にどのような政策を安倍政権は実際に実行しているんでしょうか、そしてどのくらいに成功していると思いますでしょうか、あるいはどういうところがまだ不足していると思いますでしょうか。えっと、ギリシャの問題ですけれども、まあ今日も今、どのくらい株下がっているか分かりませんけど、最初、ちょっと見たら500円が450円ぐらい下がっているという中で、まあ、そういう影響は見事に出ているということなんですが、まあえー、来月の5日に、えー、ギリシャで国民投票があって、どういう結果になるかも、まあ、一部関わることかもしれませんけれども、まあまあ、2つのケースで、相当なオーステリティをしっかりしっかりやりながら受け入れるか、離脱するか、まあ、た,ただ、そのインパクトは、その経済の力としてギリシャっていうのは、まあ、はっきり言ってかなり小さいのでですね、結果としては、最初、まあ、今日の株も下がり、世界の経済のマーケットにおいては、ある程度センシティブに透明になって、まあ、1、2か月したら、相当落ち着いてくるのかな、結果としては日本の経済への大きな影響っていうのは、あんまり考えなくていいのかなっていうのは、僕の、あるいは、まあえー、それは直接、ギリシャとこういろいろな、えー、関係のあるところを除けばですね、一般論としては、えー、むしろポルトガルもイタリアもスペインもだいぶ良くなっている中で、大きな影響は少ないのかなっていうのが一つですね。それと、まあ、安倍さんの政策、まあ、2012年の暮れから政権を取って、えー、まだ2年半なんですが、まあ、非常にその、今まで官僚をかなりそのあまり使いたがらなかった民主党政権から比べると、官僚も、あるいは民間有識者と称していろいろな会議体を設けてその非常に多くの人たちを巻き込んでもっと言えばそのまあなんとか会議とかいうのは結果としては政治があるいは官がやりたいような方向に持っていくお墨付き的な部分もないわけじゃないんですが。あの少なくともそういう演出はかなりうまくやって早くやってきたなっていうのはものすごく一般的なあの印象ですねず,ずっとやっちゃっていいですかいやちょっと止めていただけますか<笑><笑> So,、uh, first of all, in regard to your first question about Greece,、um, as you see,、um, there have been some effects、uh, on the stock markets. In fact, before I came here, I was watching、uh, how stock market prices, and they have fallen to the tune of about 500 or 550 yen or so.、Uh, and so, it's obvious that there is some、uh, impact about what is happening、uh, regarding what is happening in, in Greece. As you know, however, next month,、uh, on uh, the 5th, there will be a national referendum、uh, held in Greece, and of course, everyone will be watching closely to see what the results will be. There are two possible outcomes. One, Is that、uh, they will accept very, very、uh, severe, harsh、uh, austerity uh, measures, uh, conditions, and stay、uh, as part of the EU, or they will、uh, base or as part of the、uh, Euro,、uh, or they will、uh, decide to go off on their own. But in any event,、uh, when we talk about the impact of、uh, what Greece does, I think the Greek economy, and I do not mean to be、uh, disrespectful, however, in the world economy,、uh, plays a very small part. It is not such a huge、um, economy.、Uh, but having said this, however, as I mentioned earlier, stock prices, even in Japan are、uh, beginning to fall, and the world、uh, markets, e- economic markets, financial markets, are very sensitive to any changes that happen、uh, with Greece. Having said all of this, however, I think within a month or two, regardless of what the outcome of that national referendum might be, I think、uh, markets will settle down. And if you're asking about、uh, what the impact might be on Japanese companies or the Japanese economy, I think that over time、uh, the impact will be、uh, fairly small. Of course,、uh, there are some companies, some organizations that deal directly with、um, Greece, and they may have、uh, some、uh, difficult situations. But putting those、uh, a few companies aside, I think in general the、um, impact will be fairly small, in part because other countries in、uh, Europe, such as Italy and Spain, are seeing an upturn in their economies.、Uh, therefore, I do not think the overall impact will be very severe. 
In regard to your second question, um, certainly uh, Mr. Uh, Abe has been in power for about two and a half years from the end of 2012, and uh, he has taken a very, very different stance from the previous um, administration, which was led by the DPJ, the Democratic Party. Uh, I took a very strong policy of not working with uh, bureaucrats. They wanted to go on their own. However, uh, the Abe administration has taken a very different tack, and they have not only cooperated with bureaucrats, but they have, in fact, cooperated with the many, many people in the private sector, academics, experts. Uh, they have created many different councils, and uh, of course, uh, one could be cynical and say that some of these councils of experts uh, are basically ways to um, give uh, a brand or a seal of approval to policies that the bureaucrats have thought up. But even if that is so, uh, I think everyone will agree that what Mr. Abe has done uh, it has been very, very well done. Uh, even if it is a performance, it has been a performance that has been very well done. So the, uh, と次、その、えー、財政再建に行く前にですね、その安倍さんっていうか、この2年半のパフォーマンスをどう考えるかっていうのをちょっとお話ししたいんですけど、私はその2013年、安倍政権が確立して、2013年1月9日から8月っていうか、6月の骨太を出すまで、約1年9ヶ月、えー、あの経済の。経済財政諮問会議っていうところの委員をやって議員をやってましてそれから去年の9月2014年の9月から今度は産業競争力会議というところの議員をやってましてまあつぶさに安倍政権の動きをまあ見れるそういう立場にいたものとしてえまあ感じるのはですねまあ、いずれにしましても政権を取ってその諮問会議を新たにこう発足させたと民主党政権ではその諮問会議っていうのはなかったわけなんですがその中でえもうすかさずまた3月にはですねまあみんな TPP っていうのはちょっと無理だろうと民主党政権の時代ですと。安倍さんが向こうあのアメリカに行く前に大体のイメージとしては TPP 無理だろうっていうのをしっかりとやはりそれを具体的にここまで動かしてきたっていうのはこれはまあ大きな冒険であろうと思いますしその次の4月には、えー、きいわゆるあの日銀の総裁を黒田さんに変えた。それでまあ、今80兆円に余るそのまあ金融緩和って言いますかモネタリーイージングをやったでまあ僕なんか常識的に思うとまあ,あれだけ逆に言えばもう緩和は一部え黒田さんの前の総裁がえやってた中であまりそ,のそんなに緩和をしたって効果があるのかなと。一部思ってたんですが結果としてやっぱりすごい効果があったんですよね。ということで80円が120円まで来たっていうそれによって日本の経済がかなり活性化したこれはやっぱり非常に大きな効果でそれと加えて補正予算を5兆円以上をかましてきたっていう中で非常に経済が具体的に動き出した。ただ経営側ってのは今でも設備投資がまだそれほど増えないっていうのはやっぱりそれはそのぐらい半年はそこでちょっと良くなってできるの経営ではないんでやっぱり5年10年まあ100年の経営とは言わないでもですね5年10年の先で投資していいのかなっていう確認がないとなかなか難しいんで今そういう季節かもしれませんけれどもまあそんなのがありますしもうちょっといいですかね。どうぞあの実はその去年の1月あ一昨年の1月9日に諮問会議に入ってで我々やはり競争力はかなりその先あとで述べます構造改革についても相当アクティブにその始まった時点はこうやってバージョンバージョン1の時代ですねで諮問会議は比較的おとなしいと言われたんですが。僕は唯一やっぱりきちっとやったなってのは去年の1月21日の会議から始まった法人税を下げてくれとで2月21日もまた会議があったんですがこの2回の会議が相当まあハイライ
とすべき時であって、まあ、これ財務省はもうあの当時全くノーで安倍さんはかなり前向き、まあ、そんな中で民間も含め我々も相当この法人税っていうのは 20% 台を目指して、まあ、最終的にはグローバルには韓国でも中国でも、まあ、シンガポールは 10% 台ですが、まあ、25% ぐらいにしてくれっていうことがかなりラインに乗ってきて具体的に政治も動いた。でまあ、今の収入ですと法人税がむしろ1兆円ぐらい増えてるっていうのは法人税のパラドックスっていいますか下げると法人税は下がるんじゃなくて上がるんだというのが事実具体的になってきているっていうのはやはりですから TPP と法人税をしっかりやっていただいて、えー、もう当然1のや2のやの金融かあの緩和、えー、財政出動これはやっぱり見事にいいあの。初動は良かったなという評価はできるんじゃないかと思います。Next, before we get into fiscal consolidation, I would like to talk to you about some of the experiences that I have had with the Abe administration. In fact, I'd just like to talk about his past two and a half years as head of the administration. On January 7, 2013,、uh, I was、uh, asked to become part of the CFP, the、uh, Council on Economic and Fiscal、uh, Policy. And I served、uh, on this、uh, council for about a year and nine months.、Uh, and uh, during that time, uh, uh, there was uh, the, uh, what is called the big boned policy. Uh, the, uh, Policy by the government、uh, to basically stimulate、uh, the economy.、Um, also,、uh, separately from that, uh, as of uh, September of 2014, uh, September of last year, I have become a member of the Industrial Competitiveness Council. Uh, and uh, as a result of my being a part of these two important uh, councils uh, that are attached to the government, I think I've been able to see what Mr. Abe has been trying to do and some of the results that he has been able to achieve uh, uh, very much up close. And、uh, I would like to Basically,、um, bring your、uh, mind, memories back to when、uh, he first took the reins of power.、Uh, at the time, uh, the uh, Council on Econ Economic and Fiscal Policy was something that had、uh, not been used at all by the、uh, DPJ administration. And the first thing he did was revive、uh, this council.、Uh, and、uh, as soon as he re regained power、uh, in March、uh, of the following year,、uh, he basically tried to、uh, revive the TPP negotiations. And、uh, this is something that, for、uh, during the administration of the、uh, DPJ, people had thought it would be impossible to move forward with. But as you can see, Mr. Abe has made、uh, tremendous progress in moving、uh, this forward. And then in Uh, April,、uh, the following month, he appointed、um, someone uh, very uh, spectacular, Mr. Kuroda, to be the governor of the Bank of Japan.、Uh, and as a result,、uh, he has been able to implement a quantitative monetary easing to the tune of about 80 trillion yen、uh, plus. And, uh, and for me,、uh, to be very honest, at that time, I thought、uh, quantitative easing would not really be much of an answer because, after all, there had been some kind of、um, easing、uh, policies that had been、uh, implemented even under the、uh, tenure of the previous governor of the Bank of Japan. But、uh, I see that、uh, Mr. Kuroda's、uh, efforts have been very, very successful. You've seen the、uh, exchange rate、uh, change from 100 yen to the dollar to 120 yen to the dollar. And that currency、uh, rate shift has been a tremendous、uh, revitalizing force. For the Japanese economy. In addition to this, Mr. Abe pushed forth a supplementary budget of 5 trillion yen, which also helped revive the economy. Having said about all of this, however, you can see, however, when we look at、um, individual、uh, different companies, we see that CAPEX,、uh, the investment in new infrastructure. Uh, capacity has not risen、uh, that much、uh, yet. And that is because although、uh, the results for the economy have been very positive over the past six months or so,、uh, that's not enough for a company to justify making huge investments in the future. They have to be able to predict what the economy will be like five years into the future, ten years into the future. I wouldn't say they have to know what it's going to be a hundred years into the future, but at least five, ten years into the future. They must have some assurance that the economy will keep、uh, growing.、Uh, having said this, however, last year,、um, you asked about structural reform. Uh, as I mentioned uh, uh, two years ago, uh, uh, in January, I became a member of the Council of Economic and Fiscal、uh, Policy, and we did talk about、uh, structural reform. We were still in the, pros,、uh, the uh, era of version one, Japan version one, and at that time it was said that this council, although it had been reactivated, was still very quiet and wasn't very accomplishing very, very much. However, in January, we had a meeting on January 21st, and we took up、uh, very seriously the issue of、uh, raising corporate. Taxes. And uh, this uh, great, uh, uh, gained great attention. And the following day, January 22nd,、uh, we had another follow up meeting again discussing corporate taxes. And I think this w a 
just the highlight of the activities of this council in that, um, of course, we faced tremendous opposition from the Ministry of Finance. Uh, however, Prime Minister Abe was very much uh, forward, looking forward to um, lowering the uh, corporate tax. Uh, eventually, we would like to see it go down to the, something in the 20 to 30 percent range. Uh, we don't expect it to go down as low as Singapore, which is 10 percent, but at least in the realm of uh, uh, what we see in uh, China and uh, uh, excuse me, South Korea, which is about 25 percent. But um, in any event, uh, we see that corporate taxes uh, were uh, able to be decreased. And it's a funny paradox. Uh, you, th you would think that if you uh, lowered uh, corporate uh, taxes, then the uh, corporate uh, tax revenues for the government would decrease. But the actual result has been an increase in the corporate tax revenue to the tune of about one trillion yen. So what I'm saying is that if Prime Minister Abe continues uh, with his successful efforts to push the TPP forward, if he continues with his uh, attempts uh, to further uh, lower the corporate tax rate, then I I think in addition to the first two arrows, you know, monetary easing and fiscal stimulation, we will see even more positive results. TPP. TPP to sono hōjin sei wo kongo mo shukkari yatte reba tということ desu ne. それではあのちょっと構造改革のお話もありましたんで、やはりあのまあ農協さんを含めてですね、これも。結構岩盤の一つだったものを、まあ、まだ法律的にはまだ完全に確立されてないんですが、まあ、あのしっかりとこれもやったとで、まあ、医療改革医療介護も含めて、まあ、今岡山大学なんかが一つの例になってますが非営利の,その医療法人っていうのも,もう大体こう目処がついてきたあるいはグレーゾーンで、えー、自己採血なんていう、まあ、自分でその血を取って検査をするっていう意味でかつてはお医者さんとか看護師さんがいないとダメだっていうような、まあ、一つの例なんですがこういうグレーゾーンもかなり具体的に前に出てきたでマイナンバー制度についてかなりその効率よくやはり、えーまあ、税金の徴収含めてですね、えー、まずとにかくそういう IT 化っていうかそれは医療であろうが全てにおいて IT 化が遅れている日本をかなり具体的にこう変えていこうというあたりは見事にやはりきちっと進めているということが言えるんじゃないかと思います。You also asked about structural reform, but uh, you see what has happened with uh, Prime Minister Abe and uh, the uh, Japan Agricultural Association, JA. Uh, this uh, area was considered to be one of the bedrock regulations uh, area uh, that were uh, very, very difficult to change. And although the legal um, uh, changes have not yet been put into uh, new laws, etc., still the fundamental reforms have already uh, taken place, and uh, he's made great progress in this area. Also, if we look at the medical field, we look at nursing care, we see, for example, that um, as uh, Uh, evidenced by Okoyama University. Uh, there are, is more and more progress on having uh, non-profit organizations uh, become involved in this field. There's also another field in medical care called the gray zone area, which has to do with, for example, allowing uh, private individuals to, or other, other individuals uh, who are not licensed doctors and nurses to take blood samples uh, to do uh, simple tests. Uh, in other words, he has been able to change uh, much of the regulations uh, in this area in very specific ways as well. Also, uh, the My Number uh, uh, policy, uh, which includes also um, the tax uh, collections uh, and also other uh, areas of uh, medical uh, care. We are seeing that uh, an area when, in which Japan was very much behind the rest of the world in terms in terms of using more and more uh, IT or um, uh, technology. Uh, He is taking very, very positive、um, steps to try to、uh, allow Japan to catch up. そうするとまあ1兆円ぐらいの医療費が浮いてくるっていうところがありましてジェネリックを今,今議論してるんですが、まあ、2018年2020年あたりに早く 80% にするというようなそういう改革もですね、まあ、あのそのファーマスユーティカルの会社にとっては困ったものなんですが非常にこうガンガンやってると。まあちょっと2、3年前が30何パーがもう今や50に近くなり80を目指すとで日本の製薬会社は新規
あの創薬っていうのはもちろん難しい中でそういう長期主催品っていうんですかジェネリックに対抗する。まあ、特許切れだけどかなり儲けてたってものがみんな儲けられなくなってもう国内の事業が惨憺たる状況にあるというところまで一部追い込んでいるっていうのはこれはやっぱり僕なんかは、えー、あんまりプライベートあのガデン飲水はできないんで文句は言えなくて黙ってるわけですがそのぐらいやっぱりガンガンやってるっていうのは間違いないです。Also,、um, if I could give you some specific examples, one of our subsidiaries, which is called Tanabe Mitsubishi Pharmaceuticals,、uh, they are, are, are looking at uh, generic um, uh, medicines. Uh, and uh, two or three years ago,、uh, the, there were only about 30%、uh, of generic、uh, medications that were uh, in uh, Japan. However,、uh, now the figures are going up to about 40%. However,、uh, that is still a very, very low number in comparison to the United States, where about 90% of the medications,、uh, the, the medicines available, are. Generics and in Europe, the numbers、uh, go from 70 to about 80%.、Uh, the generics,、uh, introducing more generics uh, into uh, Japan, is being seriously discussed and debated within uh, the uh, government. We're hoping that eventually by 2018, or at the latest by 2020, we will be able to in、uh, increase the percentage of generics、uh, being used in Japan from、uh, the current 40% to about 80%.、Uh, these are the kinds of regulatory reforms that Mr.、Uh, Abe is very much、uh, promoting. This is something that is、uh, very positive not only for Pharmaceutical companies, but for uh, the, uh, the country uh, in, in general. Uh, by having uh, this uh, tremendous change, uh, uh, you'll be able to have uh, much uh, more uh, money is freed up for、uh, companies to invest、uh, in new uh, innovative uh, medications. As you know,、uh, generics have a positive and a negative effect. One is that it makes、uh, medications cheaper for the general population, but also、uh, it means that companies which had patents see their patents run out, and all of these are very um, uh, profitable patents,、uh, patented medications. Uh, now, no longer produce money.、Uh, this is something, therefore, th uh, that uh, companies are, are fe fe、uh, facing、uh, tremendous、um, uh, difficulties, and this is a situation that needs to be resolved because of corporate governance issues. Because I, as I said, myself, I'm involved in a pharmaceutical company because it's one of our subsidiaries. I can't speak up too much about this. Still, I am very, very、um, pleased with the fact that Mr.、Uh, Abe is moving forward with this kind of regulatory reform as well. えっと、じゃあ最後にあの財政再建の,その可能性というかどう,どう考えるかというんですが、まあ、あの先ほどこ,この13ページでも簡単に述べましたけれどももともとその2020年に対して経済成長率がまあスタンダードというか普通ですとその 2% ノミナルで 1% リアル GDP インクリスというのを仮定したら 16.4 兆円ぐらいまだデフェスってのが出るんですね。で 3% 名目で 2% 実質 GDP のインクリスっていうんで 9.6 兆円のそれでもまだ赤が出るそういうまず状況があります。So, in regard to my views as to whether、uh, Mr. Abe will be successful in achieving fiscal consolidation, in other words, producing a surplus、uh, in the primary balance in 2020,、um, as I referred to uh, uh, in my slide on page 13,、uh, the、uh, original goal was 2020. However, when we look at the economic growth rate uh, predictions, uh, standard uh, predictions would be that you would have a nominal growth rate of 2%, a real growth rate of 1%.、Uh, that would still mean that by 2020, we would have a 16.4 trillion yen deficit. In the primary balance.、Uh, if we were to be more optimistic and predict a nominal growth rate of 3% and a real growth rate of 2%, we would still be producing a deficit of 9.6 trillion yen. So, the Sanoni of Kate Ste, now Katz, so Dibus de Shuga, so tax elasticity, they say, Danceris, the other guy. 1.0 を、まあ、財務省は仮定してるんだけどその、まあ、経済財政諮問会議は 1.2 とか 1.3 もありえるだろうというのをこう仮定するとそれでまた4兆円か5兆円出てくるですから3と2でなおかつあの税制男性率がちょっと上げてそこで税収っていうのは 6.49.6 の